Midnight Cry, y'all come on tonight. God bless you. Hello on the replay. Good to see y'all. Hello, my super fans as well. Those of you who watch on the replay, love y'all. Come on in. We got an awesome, awesome teaching on tonight that I believe God's going to speak some things for his people. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen. God bless you, Suzette. Come in and comment. How you all doing on tonight? <clears throat> God bless you, Sister Raven. Sister Cassandra, God bless you. Lily, God bless you. Sister Lily, your uh, your gift is on the way. My number one super fan. And like I said, it's not about competition, y'all. Uh, don't get it twisted. Like it, it don't don't get that competitive spirit. Uh, one thing about it. If you already have a competitive mindset, more than chances are you'll always be a loser. If you always have a competitive mindset, you always trying to compete, always trying to beat somebody, always trying to be number one, always trying to be first. The word of God said that last should be first anyway, so that lets you know the order of God. Those who are least among you are going to be greater. So don't get that, don't get that, that competitive mindset. You know, I, what I did was I, I really, I gave, I, I, I gave the gift because I wanted to do something to honor uh, my super fans. And I used, I, I used to do stuff like that, like last year. I used to, um, send out things for the, uh, the, I used to do, I used to do a heart challenge. And I used to give to people who did the heart challenge, and I did that. But I may start that later on as God leads me. But I do this to to excite the people, you know, to make them, you know, feel welcome on the scope. Whatever I can do for the ministry, uh, just to draw people, you know. It's, it's not about gimmicks. It's not about none of that. It's just showing my love and my appreciation, appreciation for you, for you tuning in, watching me. Uh, for pulling on this word, for sharing my word, for giving, whatever it may be. You know, I just want to show my appreciation back. So I do things like that. So uh, Lily was my number one super fan <clears throat> and I wanted to bless her. So I sent her something out, Lily. I got your address and I um, it sh hopefully you'll get it uh, before Christmas. But if not, it'll be probably the day after or the uh, two days after that. But hopefully you get it. Because I put it in the word, uh, the mailbox today. <clears throat> Amen. Pray for me. We just heard something on our porch. Uh, God, we actually come against every attack in Jesus' name. Father, break fear as well. God, move for them not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. So God bless y'all. <clears throat> God, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> God bless us to Lily as well. We thank each and every one of you that's coming on uh, tonight. 13 followers. We believe God going to... Pick the followers up as uh, God draws, amen. But I had an awesome word on tonight that I wanted to minister. And I just, I wanted to say this, how one thing about it, when we, when we go through trials, this is how people see who you are. This is how people see the light. But see, can, can, when people see you, do they see God in you? Like on your job, when they see you, do they see God? Can they say you're a Jesus man? Can they say you're a Jesus woman? Is there something different about you? Is that glow up on you? Is that light up on you? Can, can people be drawn to you? You understand? Like, one thing about it, you can't be murmuring and complaining all the time. Like, one thing about it, that, I mean, that's a bad look on you. You say you're a man of God. You're a woman of God. You're such a believer. But all you do is murmur and complain. Where your praise at? He said praise is calmly to the upright. That's why I can tell some of you are upright because you don't have a praise. A real child of God, they praise God under pressure. They magnify God in the struggle. They magnify God more than their situation. God, I'm going to make you bigger than what I'm going through. So what, what people do is they start murmuring and they start complaining through a trial. Do you know how you can like lose the, your connection, lose your anointing in a trial? is by murmuring, complaining, and having a wrong attitude. That's how you can mess around and fail your trial. One thing about it, if you don't pass first grade, you ain't going to the second grade. You're going to stay right where you are. 
So until you pass that test, you're not going to the next test. Do you understand? So I'm saying we murmur and complain about a thing. And what, what's so bad about it, it's stuff that we put ourselves in. That we doing what and what was in my spirit is we have a lot of self-inflicted wounds. Meaning we inflict things on our on, on ourselves. You complaining about being sick. You complaining about it, you talking about it, but are you praying about it? Are you getting to a place where you call upon God and say, God, you said in your word, by your stripes, I am healed. Are you getting to a place where you stand on God's word? God, despite of how I feel, I feel ill. God, I got diabetes. I got high blood pressure. I got bad migraine. Whatever the case may be, did you pray about it? Did you say, God, come in and heal my body? God, touch me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Or did you complain all day long about how I don't feel good? Man, I'm so sick. Wanting somebody to feel sorry for you. You got high blood pressure. See, watch this. We see we got self-inflicted wounds. So you got high blood pressure. The people told you to stop drinking. But then you wonder why you got high blood pressure. But you running around talking about you sick and you don't feel well. Stop drinking. See, that's self-inflicted. That's a self-inflicted wound. Just like if somebody commits suicide with a gun, they shoot themselves. That was self-inflicted. We are self-inflicting ourselves. You're a diabetic, but all you do is sit around and eat Snickers all day. And then you complain about being a diabetic and how you got to that state. You understand, like, we, we self-inflicted wounds. That God was beginning to, he was putting this in my, my spirit. He put it, the Holy Ghost brought it back to me. And I was doing a message months back, and I, I spoke about that, how we inflict each other. We inflict ourselves. So when people see you, they should be able to see God in you, not complaining about how you sick. Wait a minute, you're supposed to be a Jesus woman. You were just quoting Bible and giving me scripture and praying for me. Now you murmuring and complaining about how you don't feel well. Want sympathy, want somebody to feel sorry for you. I'm saying at all times, you're supposed to do well. Let your light shine. I did this scope on tonight. I wanted to do it on tonight about the children of the light. Amen. Because I believe many of you who, as you get into a place with God, as God begins to birth you and as God begins to mold you, you're coming to a place of maturity in God where God can use you. Be a light into the world. Be a light on your job. Be a light at the post office. Be a light anywhere. Are you letting your light shine in this season? One thing about it, can people see Jesus in you? Can they see the glow? Can they see the anointing? Can they see you've been spending time in the presence of God? Because one thing about it, you're going to have a word. You're going to have something. There's going to be something different about you. It's going to be something different about you that people look at you and say, well, something about him is different. He's not the same. She's not the same. She's set apart. Even his walk is different. He got this talk. See, your speech betrayed you. People know when we step on the scene because we ain't talking crazy. We ain't cursing like they doing. But in every conversation, they, every word they saying. But you sitting over here just talking, having a casual conversation, not really mingling. When you get upset, you get frustrated. When you get frustrated, you know what I mean? You you say things, but you listen, you don't you don't talk, you don't talk out of a curse word, you don't talk like them. You don't get into uh, arguments and gossip. You don't you don't lie and, and, and intertwine with them. See, they see how you differ. See, you being a light. Blessed are the peacemakers, right? They see how you're a peacemaker. They see how you help people. They see how you differ. They see how you speak wisdom. There's going to be a light up on you. People are going to see that. Especially when you've been in the presence of God. This is why I say you don't have to come to people with a title. People are going to know who you are. They're going to know who you are when you just speak to them and give them wisdom. 
give them understanding, give them revelation. I'm not coming off deep. Hey, you know, I'm a man of God. I'm prophet so-and-so. One thing about it, when you got a light, listen to me on this. When you got a light up on you, you're not going to have to do it. You're not going to have to do it. God, gonna, God is going to do it. They're going to see God in you. They're going to say, even if they're agnostics and non-believers, they're going to know there's something different about you. Your speech is going to betray you. Remember how I tell you all the time, the anointing has a sound. The anointing has a sound. The anointing has a particular uh, a particular sound. Something you hear, you hear, you're like, wow, this sounds a little different. Sound like it got something on it. I can't quite put my hand on it. That's how them agnostic and stuff be looking. They say he got he he talked different. He ain't swearing. He's showing love, shaking my hand, giving me a hand, you know, giving me hugs, talking real nice, real sweet. They go, these people are going to see there's something different about you. So you're not going to have to come with the title. Hey, I'm Evangelist Christina. I'm Prophetess Cassandra. You will not have to come to them saying, hey, I'm, I'm Pastor uh, Anthony. You will not have to come to them with a title. These people are going to know who you are just by what you speak. A young man on tonight uh, at my job. I always use my job because, of course, God used me as a light there. Some of you don't know me. I always use my job because God got me in this place, y'all, where he ended up using me. I'm talking about heavily, y'all. I've been, I've been, God used me heavily on that job. And it's mind-blowing, even to me. And there was this young man. I'm training him, and I'm giving him wisdom, and I'm just being the light. Watch this. We're, about, we're talking about being the children of a light. Watch the anointing and the wisdom of God. Just wait on God. So I said, was training him, and I was showing him things and telling him, you know, different wisdom and how I started talking about how it takes a system. When I was training him, I was showing him things, how to work, work from left to right so he don't get a, a, a piled up in everything he was doing. So I was trying to show him and give him wisdom. And I heard God speak to me. I heard alienation. And so I went to him. I said, man, listen, you like to alienate yourself a lot. I say, sometimes that's good but that can be bad. I say one thing about alienation. I say sometimes it's good. Separation is good because separation is also your protection. That's good. That's where a lot of your strength comes from. But see, I came to him. I didn't say, oh, I heard from God. I came to him, just gave him a word. I didn't have to say who I was. I didn't have to say no title. This man already had an idea of who I was, but I didn't tell him. Like I say, they're going to see a light. You will not have to go to them and tell you who you are. I don't go by a title. I go by Brother Travis Miller. I don't go by a title. I got to a place where God humbled me. The teaching I get, you don't have to be, you don't have to be known by a title. There's nothing to prove. There, and when I tell y'all, there's nothing else left to prove. People are going to know your fruit. They're going to know your works by your fruit. They're going to see that anyway. They're going to see how you speak and things come to pass. I was so prideful at one time. I wanted everybody to know who I was, that I was in the spirit and I was so deep. And I would post prophecy. I would post it and then this stuff come to pass. And I would post this stuff and screenshot stuff and post it. Trying to get somebody to see how I know that I was. See, I was trying to prove something. I had no wisdom. You understand? I was trying to prove something. It's like I had something to prove. So I said, you know, God killed pride in me. I kept praying. God killed pride in me. Take it away. And little by little, what God had to do is God had to also take it away. But God also had to hit you with something to humble you. He may have to hit you to humble you. That's why all that ministering, that teaching I'll be doing, telling you what God can do. It's true. Because I've been there. 
So it, it's that's why I say, beloved, it's very important that you don't get a call up on titles because if the light is up on your life, when the anointing is there, people are going to know. You're not going to put a title on yourself and put a sign and say, hey, this is me. These people are going to know who you are. People identify me before I even met them, before I even spoke a word. People just see me because I, I watch. But as soon as I started speaking to some people, they automatically know who I am. Because the, the anointing has a sound. It, it has a sound. And not yet have I came on here and gave you a title of who I was. You'll understand it later on. Like I say, this ain't no joke with me. This ain't, this, I mean, this is real. I don't play with God. I done built myself too far up in God to play with you. One thing about it, I'm not an entertainer. I'm not here to entertain you. Those of you first timers, I'm not here to play with you. I'm, ain't no gimmicks here. Ain't no blessed onions here. Ain't no, you're going to get your seed to be blessed. Send your seed or you're going to be blessed. Ain't none of that over here. Yeah, you, you boogers can give. <laughs> you can give. But I'm not telling you what to sow. I'm not telling you sow your thousand dollars to get a mega anointed. I'm not on here to play with you. So I'm not here to entertain you. They probably entertained you. You them preachers played with you so long, but everybody don't play with God. There's some people crying out seeking God in the midnight hour. One thing about it, when you when you got a light up on you, you ain't got to boast about nothing. These people got to know who you are. You don't have to plaster your title everywhere so people can flock to you. These people got titles, and you can say I'm throwing off or, or whatever it is. You can say I'm being arrogant, whatever. No, I'm confident. These people got titles, and then you, you see a title, you see, oh, prophet. So, so let's go on. Let's see if she got a word. Go on there. Book ain't got no word, no anointing, but you got a title. You're a prophetess, but what a word at? Can't even flow. You buckling. Trying to get a word out. You know what I'm saying? Just don't know what to say. Reading from scripture, buckling. But you say the anointing is there. Why you can't flow? So I mean, now everybody didn't flock to you because of your title. Then you ain't got no word to get these demons up off these people. You ain't got no Bible, no anointing to break the yoke. But we got titles and no power, a bunch of power. But listen, no power to blow their nose. No power, no anointing. But you got titles. One thing about it, I don't want no title. I don't want no ordination papers. I want to be ordained by the Holy Ghost. I don't want no, I do not want no holy, no, uh, no ordination papers. Y'all book is trying to be ordained, trying to be seen. But let me tell you, let me tell you something. Get God. Get God so people can see that light because the anointing is going to destroy the yoke. Remember I was talking about the other day about embracing the calling. It's going to, people are going to, uh, it's going to take the light. It's going to take the anointing. I'm referring to the anointed as a light, as a light. It's going to take the anointing to draw the mother who just lost her son due to addiction. It's going to take an anointing to draw the father who just lost three sons in a car wreck at one time. It's going to take the light. It's going to take the anointing to draw people like that. It's going to take the anointing and draw the, the, the uncle that just lost the niece that he watched over after her mother, after her mother and her father that got killed now in a murder suicide. Prophetically speaking, the niece that he watched grow up from five years old got killed in a car wreck on her 18th birthday. Now that he bought, that he bought through a party, filmed it, loved this little girl, and then turned 18, then died in a car wreck on the day of her birthday, going to go skate. You understand? It's going to take an anointing to draw that uncle. That's what I'm saying, y'all. Listen to me on tonight. People need the light. Do y'all know how dark it is right now? It's going to take the anointing to draw people. Like, can you go to them and tell them about God when you just lost three sons in a car wreck at the same time? 
and talk about God to them. That's why I'm telling a serious word on tonight. That's why I'm, I'm really trying to I'm really trying to break the yoke to get to some of y'all because y'all think ministry is just a game. Don't you know that this is real life stuff people are dealing with, but y'all take it lightly and say, oh, it's glamorous and oh, you got a title and oh, you teach, you preach so well. You don't understand where that word came from. That word came from real life struggles, real life trials, but some of y'all still going to think it's a game because you ain't called it yet. That God sent an oracle to you to speak to you, but you just can't receive because you got a stony heart. Do you understand? This is why I say, y'all, it's going to take an anointing. It's going to take the light. We are the children of the light to draw these people in a dark world. When it gets dark, people are going to want the light. They're going to want the light. They're not running in darkness. They're trying to escape darkness. You don't want to come out of darkness and go straight into darkness. You want some light. But those who desire to stay in darkness, they're going to stay there. Just like the light ain't going to draw some people. There's some people that want to stay in darkness because they don't want their deeds to be exposed. They don't want this mask to come off. October 31st, we got Halloween. It's Halloween for every day for some of you boogers because you got a mask on every day. Don't nobody know who you are. You got multiple personalities, triple lives, double lives. Don't nobody know who you are because you got masks on. You can't be transparent. You you can't repent. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut that flesh all the way down. You know, I'm gonna cut that flesh when you come on here. So we desire to stay in the dark instead of coming to the light to let God shine. Not my cold sake. God shine your light down from heaven. And if there's anything that's in me that should be, get it out. Watch this on tonight. Feel the anamastosi. I feel the anointed on tonight. Romans, I'm going to show you this, y'all. This is why you need the light. And we're not going to compromise neither. Romans 1 and 16. Really good scripture. This is what Apostle Paul was saying. This man that y'all stood, stood up for the gospel. This was a man that persecuted the church. Thank you, man of God. This is a man that persecuted the church. That did evil in the sight of God. So watch this. Romans 1 and 16. He says, for I am not ashamed. Watch this. The word of shame is to just be like, just to have this regret. Have a regret of, of, of doing a thing. You shame. You, you just got your, your tail just tucked. You, you just ashamed. It's one big regret. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's not ashamed of that word. Are you ashamed of the gospel? How can, pe how can people see the light up on you when you're ashamed to minister about the light? So you don't want those in darkness to come to the light. You're ashamed to minister. You're ashamed to tell them about Jesus. Some of y'all don't even want to mention the name of Jesus on your job. Because you listen, you, you're afraid. You're, try you're afraid of offending somebody. You don't want to offend the Muslim. You don't want to offend the homosexual. You don't want to offend them because you think because when you say Jesus, you automatic, they automatically going to be a, a condemned because you mentioned Jesus and you go to church and your lifestyle is different. See, many of us are ashamed. We're ashamed to mention Jesus. You're ashamed to say you watch me. You're ashamed of it. They say, oh, you watch him? Oh, you watch him? Why you watch his word? You know what I'm saying? A shame only because I speak truth. How many of y'all ashamed of Jesus? You, I mean, you're ashamed of the gospel. You're ashamed to minister to the backslider because you don't want to offend them and say, come back to God. You just stepped out of position. You're ashamed to minister to them. You're ashamed to minister to the lesbian. They tell them that, baby girl, God don't want you to be like that. God wants you to deliver you're beautiful. God made you. God created you in his image. Are you ashamed to go talk to them like that? Are you ashamed to tell them what thus says the Lord? Apostle Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God. This is the power of God 
He says, unto salvation, to everyone that believe, to everyone that believe, it's going to be the power of God. I'm not talking about the unbeliever. I'm not talking about the agnostic, those who don't believe. That's why God got you as a light. So you can shine forth that light, so you can minister, prophesy, give these people the word. Offer up salvation unto these people, so these people can be delivered, these people can be changed. Red Kobase. How can one be uh, how can one hear less a preacher be sent? Do you understand? These, I mean, you got to come to them and give them the word. You may be the only Bible some people read. There's some people that won't step foot in the church because they've been condemned by religion. So it's sad how we condemn people before they even get to God. We condemning people to hell before God condemning them to hell. We playing God. That's what we do. So listen, it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. See, we understand it's the power of God. For not, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. We believe so you believe it. Can you help somebody else believe? I understand it's his spirit that's going to draw now. We got to where we know it's going to take the spirit to draw them because it took him to draw you. <laughs> so we already know that. So that's why I'm not ashamed to listen. At least plant this seed with that word. Let me let this seed, let me let this word take root in you. See, plant this seed by speaking a word. I speak life unto you. I speak power over you. Listen, I speak a miracle over you. Start speaking over these people. Start planting that seed. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's going to take that word to destroy the yoke. It's going to take a word to draw the people. It's going to take the light. Do you understand how serious this word is? Apostle Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many Christians, we so-called Christians... Are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're ashamed of it. But you praising God. Hallelujah. You got your hands up around the believers. How about when you be in a room full of unbelievers. And agnostics. How about when you be on a job in a restaurant. Surrounded by unbelievers and agnostics. When you work it in one corner. And you hear somebody over here in this corner. Throwing shade, talking about Jesus is a fairy tale. Why well, hold on to a make believe friend? Oh, I, I got ears to hear. I, oh, I can hear what's being said. But see, what it is, it's shade being thrown at me in my direction. It's fiery darts. But you think I don't care? Oh, I'm listening. You just want me to respond. That's, see, that's the enemy. That, what, that, what, what the enemy trying to do? The enemy trying to discourage you, trying to make you ashamed. No, you ain't going to make me ashamed. Watch when God speak. We're going to see who get the laugh laugh, the last laugh. Oh, I can't wait till God speak. We're going to see who get the last laugh. You laughing now, but you ain't going to be laughing when that word come to pass. You don't like me because I got eyes to see and tell you about tell you everything about you. Tell you what you're doing in secret. Playing hide and seek. On your spouses. I come up and tell you about what you're doing. And then I do it in secret and do it in love. How in the world does he know that? You were just laughing at me last week. You ain't laughing now. Laugh at the prophetic word. I'm talking about God to have you in a place. God will flaunt his power. God said, okay, they want to laugh at you. Okay, I'm going to give you a reason to laugh at them. That's how God is. God ain't nothing to play with. He said, okay, they want to laugh at you. I'm going to say, listen, I'm going to send a worse word this time. And let's see if they're going to receive. Because God know I'm going to prophesy. He know I ain't going to compromise. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not, a, I'm not ashamed to say, thus says the Lord. I'm not ashamed to minister when I hear something in my spirit. Those people already, they listen, y'all. When I tell y'all, they already know how I'm coming. They already know. And guess what? 
it scares them. And it's not to scare you. They think it's weird. They think it's strange. He's creepy. All kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? But I, I got ears to hear. Got ears to hear. But one thing about it, I ain't compromising for y'all. I'm still going to prophesy. We're going to see who crazy when it comes to past. Yeah, they, they may call you crazy right now. But you're not going to be so crazy when this stuff comes to pass. And it happens right in front of you. And then what's so crazy about it, he's going to let it be expedient. He's going to let it be expedient. And one thing about it, he's going to send so much word to convict these people. He's going to send so much word to convict the people. It's to draw the people. It's to draw the backslider. And see, one thing about it, Apostle Paul caught the greatest revelation. He said, rather you all speak in tongues, or rather you prophesy that the unbelievers may be listened, drawn, and, and repent and fall due to their sins. In other words, when they hear this word, they're going to be convicted. The word that they hear is going to be convicted because it's going to be true. A true word of prophecy is going to come forth and convict them. This is why God sends a word for the non-believer and the agnostic because he's trying to turn them. God is so merciful to try to draw these people. This is why I say, get the light. And when you get Jesus, you get the light. Yeah, we, we minister Jesus over here. We talk about Jesus. We talk about Yeshua. We talk about the Messiah here. We, we talk about him. Because we want people to be drawn. Whether y'all know it or not, people get saved through these broadcasts. They get saved through these broadcasts. It ain't no, it's no game. God is drawing people through his word in this season. The anointing is different. This word is not the same. This word I must still say. This word is shifted for the people. Because God want to draw the people back to a place in him. I'm talking about the spirit of Elijah is here. To draw the hearts of the children back to the Father. And the hearts of the Father back to the children. Amen. It's about being the children of the light. I, am, am I helping anybody on tonight? Is this word really blessing you? Is it really blessing you? Watch this. Matthew. Let's see. Matthew 5 and 14. Matthew 5 and 14. He says. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. One thing about it, a city that's set on the hill. Everybody can see this hill. They're going to be able to see you. They're going to know, listen, they're going to know you don't, do not look the same. They're going to know there's something about you. Can people look at you and see you different? Can they look at you and see Jesus? Can they look at you and see the anointing on your life? Is there a glow? Is there a light? He said, there's a city up on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. This light, we don't hide our light. We let this thing shine. Do you understand? We let it shine. We are a city up on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are the children of the light. And one thing about it, beloved, you have to understand, when God anoints you, people are going to see it. You don't have to have a title. You don't have to come forth with a, 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 sign, on you, a sign on you saying, look who I am. It's not about that. It's not about trying to be seen. It's about you being the light. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When they see that light, when God start using you, beloved, people are going to begin to glorify him because the word in you drew them the light up on you. Now, my course say, when they was in darkness, this stuff drew them. The light is going to draw people. You are the children of the light. Walk in the light. Act like the light. Know who you are. Know who your father is. This is the time for God to use you. This is the time for you to go forth in God. 
and say, I'm a child of the light. God, I want you to use me. Shine your light down from heaven. Expose, get me right. Shine your light down upon me in this season. God, I thank you for a word on tonight. God, I thank you for a manifestation of your spirit. God, fill your people with the Holy Ghost. God, move for them not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. God, release a fresh impartation upon your people on tonight. God, let this word take root on tonight, Lord. Give them good soil, God. Break the stony heart on tonight. Rababasto say, lose clarity on tonight. Give them eyes to see, ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to listen encourage you about being the children of a light. Serious message. God wants to use you in your job, in your home. Be the light wherever you go. Be the light. I don't care where it is. Walmart, grocery stores, gas stations. Red Kambama said, God going to begin to use y'all in unknown places. Uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable, but you are going to be the light. And after that, guess what? All men are going to give God the glory. Because now they believe through you. The agnostic believe through you. After all that prophesying is not in vain, that teaching and that preaching is not in vain, somebody is eating off your tree and they're receiving that word. Somebody's faith getting ready to go to another level. Now my cool says, somebody light is not going to be dim no longer. It's going to be bright. It's going to light up our store. Say. It's going to light up a room and it's going to draw people. Say, God, relight my fire. So people can see it. So people can be recharged off me. God move. Not by power nor by might. God send more of your anointing. Send more of your spirit. Let me be the light unto the world. God I'm a child of the light. You said as I am. So are you in this world. Let God use you beloved. After all that stuff you went through. is not in vain. Listen, God want to move through you, not by power, nor by might, but by his spirit. But you got to get in a place where say, God, use me for your glory, not my glory. Use me for your glory and I'll give it right back. And I just want to encourage y'all tonight about the children of the light. If you received it, type amen on the screen. Lift up your hearts as well. God bless you. Good to see you, Sister Lisa. Serious word on tonight, y'all, because I'm in an hour where I want more of God. I'm still seeking God, despite of what I got to go through, despite of what it looked like. Do you understand? I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Sister Nikki, stay planted in God. Stay anchored. Don't be moved. Don't go by what it looked like. The enemy may speak to your mind. But see, God going to lose you. God going to send clarity to situations. Even questions, urgent answers. Sister Nikki, urgent answers. Begin to get in God. Let God get in you. Receive it on tonight. Recorbobosi. Receive it on tonight. God bless you. Sister Cassandra, you getting ready to get direction. Direction. Receive it on tonight. Good to have y'all all. I just wanted to do that. Anybody have any questions, any prayer? God bless you, super fan. Y'all can get there if you watch the messages. And like I said, I thank God for y'all that come on as well. Amen. Anybody need personal prayer? Also, you can reach me on Facebook, YouTube, wherever. Also, can you can email me by prof, uh, prophettravismill at gmail.com. Amen. I appreciate y'all coming on. And I appreciate y'all for sharing the messages amen, uh, as well. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being on on tonight. Any questions for me? No prayer. No nothing. Thank you for the hearts. God, release a fresh anointing on your people. In Jesus' name. Anyway, y'all be back on tomorrow night with another message. I believe God going to flow and God going to speak some things. God bless you, bro. Good to see you, man. It's been a while, man. God bless you. Hope all is well. 
And like I said, we, we got to stay rooted in God, y'all. Be the children of the light. God going to use you. Somebody, you sit in the same church and, you know what I mean, just draining prophetically, not getting filled. But see, God also got you there to bring the anointing. You just got to seek him. Get more of God for yourself. You don't have to be chasing a prophetic word, going from scope to scope, going from ministry to ministry. Stay planted. Do you understand? God going to use you. But God bless y'all. Be back on tomorrow night with another midnight cry. I love you so much. I mean that. Y'all be blessed. Hold on. I have a question, sir. Okay. Ask a question. I was about to click off. You got me real quick. <laughs> but love y'all. Good to see you on. Hey, Amen. Be blessed. You as well. You as well. I was trying to be respectful. I saw you had a question. When you have a personal when you have a personal prophetic word for someone, okay, is that a question? Or are you just talking? <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. Do you release it personally or in front or just? It depends on what God is speaking. But when God unction you, you want to get that word out because you may never see them again. You may never see them again, so you have to move with obedience. Do you understand? You have to move by obedience. Uh, uh, everything's not prophecy, neither. Everything's not prophecy. A lot of people say, oh, well, he prophesied to me. No, I didn't. A lot of times you can prophesy, but I give, I flow from the realm of knowledge as well. So I can give you knowledge, but give you prophecy at the same time. Everything is not prophecy. You have to know the difference. Prophecy is giving you direction. So uh, one day I'm going to do a prophetic teaching. Uh, prophets flow out, of, uh, flow out of a lot of wisdom, uh, knowledge. You understand? Everything isn't prophecy. Now, when a real prophecy comes forth, you're going to know it because uh, it ain't going to sound like everybody else's. It's going to sound different. That's how you know what prophecy is. But I'll do a, I'll do a teaching... Uh, a prophetic teacher. I don't really waste a lot of time on that because everybody want to be a prophet. Everybody wants to teach and have prophetic seminars. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> don't let me get on. Don't let me get started with that. You know, but love y'all. You have any more questions? Email me. I'm gone. Good night.